And amen. What a powerful testimony. Sam and Noel's in the house tonight. Why don't you just lift your, this morning, lift your hands up. We love you. We honor you. Hallelujah. You know, welcome to the supernatural life. In the supernatural life, all things are possible. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, this morning, I just want to honor two very important people in my life. Number one, um, my daughter Gianna. She turns 11. She turned 11 today. And so, Gianna, if you're watching online, I love you. The Lord is with you, and I'll be home tonight, and we're going to party again, in Jesus' name. <laughs> and the second uh, person that we want to celebrate this morning is our beloved Pastor Dominic. Come on, someone clap and shout. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why don't you stand and honor on his 67th birthday. He said it first, so I didn't give away his age. He gave away his own age. But let's sing happy birthday. I, I don't got a good voice, but Tony, maybe you want, you want to rumble? Get us in key, baby. Because I'm, I'll go out of key, then the anointing will leave. I'm going to start rapping. That was a rhyme. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Dominic. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor D. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may be seated. And Dad, like we said in the first service, you're coming into a new beginning. I hear the words, a new millennia, a new era. And I believe that the Lord has raised you up for this time and this season for this specific purpose. And even as we're preaching about Joshua and the Jordan and arising this morning, it's like this is your, your Joshua moment. And it was interesting because I didn't say this the first service, but it was, it was in the notes and then it all just started hitting me. But God had to prepare Joshua thirteen. Or he had to prepare Joshua for 13 battles. 13 battles when they crossed over the Jordan. 13. And you said you're 67. 6 plus 7. 13. And it's like you're, this season, seasons of your life have been battle, victory, battle, victory. But I just know that that promised land is now for you and the harvest is here. You've passed every test and it's going to be glorious. And I just feel to say that if you feel led to bless my father this morning in any way, whatever it looks like, just be led by the Spirit and just give him what the Lord says. Amen. This man, the way he is to each and every one of you is the way he was at home. I shared my father with this church. You got the same person. He's true blue. Everything he talks about is Jesus, period. And he's all about souls. He has walked the walk and he's talked the talk. If there's anyone to bless and honor, Dad, it's you this morning. So I love you and thank you for being the greatest example in my life. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Someone say a big amen. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, that this morning we're laying a foundation, Father, for this new era. Lord, that you're taking the body of Christ in. Lord, I ask that you speak through me. Lord, let every word that comes out of my mouth be from your throne room. May every word be sharper than an arrow hitting the bullseye. Lord, I ask for words of knowledge. I ask for healing, signs, wonders, miracles. I ask for breakthrough and I ask for souls this morning. Lord, speak to our hearts. Burn in us your fire and your glory. Lord, let your presence be made known this morning through the glory of your Son, Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Use me this morning, I pray. In Jesus' name, everyone said a big amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, T. That was awesome. Joshua chapter 1, verse 5. And nine, 
After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my, service is, my servant is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan. Someone say arise. You and all this people to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, as I said to Moses. Verse 5. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Verse 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid or dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. How many people like that scripture? That's an amazing passage. It's like the Lord was passing the baton from the great leader Moses on to the next generation. And he looks at Moses, or, or Joshua, and he says, Arise, go over this. The title of the message this morning is Arise, Go over this. Someone turn to your neighbor and say, Arise, go over this. Arise in Hebrew is the word kum, which means to stand. The term can also mean to rise up against a person in combat. To rise up a per against a person in combat. So when God spoke to Joshua and said, arise, he wasn't just saying, get up. He said, put on your boxing gloves, because <laughs> it's time to fight. We got a land to get to. We got a Jordan to cross. And we got armies and kings to defeat that are a lot bigger than Israel. How many people feel like you got some things in your life that seem a lot bigger than what you can do on your own? Got some circumstances, got some scenarios that look impossible. But here's what the Lord said to Joshua. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord, God, your God, is with you wherever you go. God told Joshua in the book of Joshua, be strong and courageous three times. Someone say three. The number three in the Bible biblically represents divine wholeness, completeness, and perfection. If there was ever a desire to highlight an idea, thought, event, or noteworthy figure in the Bible for their prominence, the number three was used to put a divine stamp, come on somebody, of completion or fulfillment on a subject matter. So what's God saying to you? Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. See, there are three conditions, someone say three, that the Lord has and we have to meet before we can see a victory. Three conditions. What are the three conditions? Someone say faith. Someone say obedience. And someone say trust. God's just not going to show up at your doorstep with a million dollars of Benjamin Franklin's. <laughs> Come on. I mean, he might, but I mean, how many people know it's highly unlikely? I believe in miracles. But there's conditions... That God has put in place 
so that he's forced to come through on his word. Because God is not a man that he should lie. So if you trust him, and if you're obedient, and you have faith, that mountain that stands in your way will be forced to be moved. How do you know this, John? I've seen it in my life. When I've been obedient and I've had faith and I've trusted the Lord, in the lowest and the highest seasons of my life, God has always came through. And I'm still standing. How many people are getting something this morning? Come on. The apostles in the book of Acts had so much faith, so much trust, so much obedience in the Lord that they were willing to give their life. They counted a privilege to die. The highest honor for Jesus because he died for them. And they knew that in the name of Jesus they could do anything. And they believed it. And they trusted and they had faith and they were obedient. And what we're witnessing on the earth, the body of Christ, I feel like we're colliding with the scriptures of the New Testament. And the Lord is raising up an apostolic church like that of Acts. And there's a collision of biblical times into now times that we're about to witness. It's a collision. There's a heavenly collide. Heaven is about to invade earth. Jesus said, my kingdom come, my will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He said, pray this way. And so the early apostles prayed for the will of God to be done on earth. And all of a sudden, as the Holy Spirit filled them, miracles, signs, wonders, it was a Holy Ghost early church takeover. From one sea to the next sea, the church exploded. So you say, John, what's it going to take? Read the book of Acts. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The blueprints there. And what we're witnessing right now is a convergence of biblical times on our times. We're waging warfare. And the Lord says, 2024 into 2025, the shift is going to take place. And the body of Christ is about to take over in Jesus' mighty name. See, you're not called to sit in your seats. You're called to serve. You're not called to sit here and just receive. You're called to release the anointing. Church is a great thing. Don't get me wrong. This is where we get discipled. This is where we learn. This is where we grow. This is where we have community. But outside of the four walls, come on somebody, that's where the damage is done. Hallelujah. How do you know, John? Because I'm a living testimony. (laughs) On Wednesday, last week, I haven't fished in two months. How many fishermen we got in the house? Come on. I was ready to slay some fish. My friend's got a beautiful boat. He's like, Jay Roos, let's go. I'm like, I'm in. And I told my wife after and asked her if I could, but I was already in in the spirit, praise the Lord. You know what I'm saying. But you always got to ask, right, Andy? You always got to (laughs) ask. I'm starting to learn, Dad. (laughs) Bianca, if you're listening, I'm just joking, praise the Lord. (laughs) So... Wednesday night, my job was to get the food, to get the snacks for the trip. It was me and my two best friends at Marco Island. And uh, normally I go to Publix. How many people know Publix? It's like Kroger. My house from Publix is like from the church to Kroger. It's quick. It's easy. It's actually better than Winn-Dixie. I've not been in Winn-Dixie in years. Winn-Dixie's further. The fruit's got a little more, you know, ripeness to it. Come on, somebody. I'm not ripping apart. When Dixie, but it's the fruit's not as fresh. And if you know the Russo family, we like fruit and vegetables. So I told my wife at 8:30 at night we were watching the Tigers game. I said, "Babe, I, I got to go to Win Dixie." She's like, "Win Dixie? Just go to Publix." Like, I'm going to Win Dixie. <laughs> That's weird. I'm like, I'm going to Win Dixie. It was all. It, it was odd. 
I just had this thing. I have to go to Winn-Dixie. My friend Joe calls me up. He's like, hey, hey, you still going to Publix? I go, I'm going to Winn-Dixie. He's like, Can you, we call them pub subs, public subs. They're really good. How many ever had a public sub? Come on. <sighs> Man, they do good subs there. They're just a, like the Italian dressing they put on there. Then you get the extra. And you just have fresh cucumbers. And then you just eat it while you're on the boat. It's so hot, you're dripping sweat. Then you just bite into the sub. It's like better than a liter of ice cold San Pellegrino water. I'll take the sub over the water. If I was on the water in a boat for five days and they said, do you want a sub or do you want water? To sub? I want the sub. I'll drink the vinegar. <laughs> How many people this is your first time at church this morning, this church? I feel bad for you, bro. <laughs> Thumbs up. So I tell Joe, I, I actually like snapped at him. I'm like, I'm going to Winn-Dixie. We'll go to Publix tomorrow. Empty your car out. I got to put my fishing poles in it. <laughs> He's like, man, <laughs> I just hang up the phone. So I go to Publix. I'm walking in. Now, mind you, I had a prayer walk in the morning. Win dixie I'm sorry. Praise the Lord. I had a prayer walk in the morning, so I'm like dialed in. How many people know you got to fill yourself up? When your tank gets empty, you got to fill yourself up. You should be overflowing. I'm preaching to myself right now. Always keep a full tank in the spirit. Because you never know when God's going to use you. So I'm walking into Winn-Dixie. And behind the vending machine outside in like the red box DVD in between them, I hear a voice. And the voice says, can you spare some change, sir? And I look over. I'm like, first I got upset. Because I'm like, I'm just trying to go to Winn-Dixie right now. You know what I'm saying? And I said, I, all of a sudden, man, I felt God come on me. And I said, bro, I don't, I don't have any money because I didn't have any cash. I just had a credit card. I go, but are you hungry? He goes, I'm starving. I go, what do you like to eat? He's like, I like the meatballs and the fried chicken from Winn-Dixie. <laughs> He's like, but, but man, the, the hot food's closed right now. There's no fresh hot food. I go, don't worry about it. I'll take care of you. So I walk in the store and I start praying in the spirit. I'm like, Holy Spirit, show me. I'm having like this time with the Lord. Come on. And I felt the anointing come on me. While I'm shopping at Winn-Dixie, I'm putting stuff in. I got the Italian breadsticks with the salami, with the fresh cheese and the olives all in one package. It wasn't like the off-brand. It was the one with the vowel at the end. Got two of those. I got two big gala apples. Hallelujah. So big, you could poke holes on them and start bowling. Okay. We got, <laughs> we got, the, wind we got the apples. I got a couple bananas. I got fresh grapes. I got goldfish. Flavor blasted. It was buy one, get one free. So I was really thinking, I'll take one for me. Come on. One for my homeboy outside. Got that. I go to the checkout. I separated it all in the nice bag for him. I walk out. I walk up to him. I'm like, here, bro, I got you. He's like, you got this for me? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, take it. I go, so I, I just started talking to him. I'm like, what's your name? He's like, my name's Alan. I go, where are you from? He's like, I'm from Detroit. He goes, I go, what nationality are you? He goes, I'm Italian and Polish. Come on, somebody. There you go. I'm like, I'm Italian too and Arab. He's like, I was raised by Jews. I'm like, this is incredible. Got all the nationalities. This is a true story. So we're going back and forth. But while I'm talking to him, he's frail and skinny, 63 years old. Frail, skinny, dripping sweat, shaking like he's detoxing. And I said, bro, what, I go, what are you addicted to? He's like. He's like alcohol, but when he said that, I just knew because just by looking at him, not discerning anything, he was coming off of something else too. And he looked so bad. I was like, I don't know if this guy's going to make it through the night. And all of a sudden, as I'm talking to him, I have a vision. I was caught up in heaven, and I was standing on the streets of gold, and out comes Alan in a white robe. And he shakes my hand. This is why I'm talking to him, having a vision over here. He shakes my hand and he looks at me and he goes, thank you. And I said, okay. Boom, I snapped back into reality. I go, I was supposed to go to Publix tonight, praise God. But God called me to win dixie to get you saved. <laughs> Come on, somebody. It's a setup. And I said, bro, God sent me to help you reset your soul. And I started preaching to him. 
I lead him to Christ. After we get done with the sinner's prayer, all, he looks at me, he puts his arms out like this. He goes, man, I got goosebumps and my hair is standing up all over my body. I go, bro, that's the Holy Ghost. He's going to touch you and he's setting you free in Jesus' name. And that was it. How many people know where you ever you go, you are God's light to humanity. You are the salt of the earth. Do I got any salt in the house? You bring the flavor. Three conditions, faith, obedience, and trust. You got got, you to have it. Numbers 14, 5 through 9. Then Moses and Aaron fell face down in front of the whole Israelite assembly gathered there. Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephthah, who were among those who had explored the land, tore their clothes. And they said to the entire Israelite assembly, The land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If... The Lord is pleased with us. Obedience. He will lead us into that land. Faith. A land flowing with milk and honey. And he will give it to us. Trust. Only do not rebel against the Lord. Obedience. And do not be afraid of the people of the land. Faith. Because we will devour them. Faith. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Trust. Do not be afraid of them. Faith. Trust. And obedience. That's what it takes. And so 12 spies went out to the promised land ahead of time. Only two had faith. Only two trusted. And only three were obedient to the word of the Lord. The 10 got shriveled up and the two led them into the promised land. Come on. And so if you're looking for God to move in your life, you got to believe and know that he's going to do it. Trust, Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on yourself and your flesh. Because when you lead on your flesh, it's imperfect. But if you're leaning on God and you're acknowledging him, he will make your path straight. Well, I don't know what to do. I don't know where I should I work. Should I move here? I don't know. I just can't see. I don't understand. Instead of saying you don't know, say by faith, I know that God is calling me to this place in a new place. In a new state. I know that God's going to turn my situation around. I might not know what it looks like. But I'm trusting he's going to get me to the promised land. He's going to get me to the other side. My son may be addicted to drugs. But I know by faith and the word of the Lord by that prophet 20 years ago. Called him out to be a pastor in the middle of the service. I'm standing on that word knowing that my son's going to get delivered and be a pastor. Come on. Obedience. Psalm 1, 1 through 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path with sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and he meditates it on it day and night. There's the conditions. Don't hang out with the wrong people. Preach to them. Who you hang out with is who you're going to become. Might not happen overnight. Little by little, come on. The ways of the world begin to eat you from the inside out. And before you know it, you're just like everybody else. But the psalmist said, if you delight in the Lord and you meditate on his word, what happens? You will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. What does that mean? Your tree will bear much fruit. If you do and you're obedient and do what God says, amen. Praise the Lord. Faith. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance, we know the scripture, of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And then the Bible also says without faith it's impossible to please them. God loves faith. If you look at Jesus in the New Testament, he was moved by their faith. When he saw belief... Just touch me and I'll be healed. What about the woman with the issue of blood? She didn't even care if Jesus recognized her. She had faith. She knew. She heard this man, this healer was coming into town. She, she knew that if she just touched the anointing, she'd be instantly healed. And she grabbed his garment and, and Jesus felt the anointing leave his body and she was instantly healed. She believed just by touching the Lord, she'd be healed. And she got her victory. Amen. 
How many people know that functioning in the spiritual gifts that God has given you takes faith? It takes trust and it takes obedience. God told me, he said, say what you see, son. Those words exactly. How many people know sometimes in the spirit we see weird and odd things? And it's hard to say them sometimes because you think you're wrong or that's weird, that's not for that person, that's the enemy, blah, blah, blah. And it's, a, you know, being a prophetic person, it's just, it's just wow, but I'm learning my gift. And so the Lord has taken me on this journey. And speaking of Sam Borgia, it was 20, probably 20, 20, 2019-ish. I was at a staff meeting at the church. I'm walking out of the meeting. I had to get back to a, a work meeting in Macomb, Michigan. And as I'm walking out, Sam Borgia just randomly shows up to the dealership or to the, the church. And Sam looks at me and goes, Jonathan, my friend from, from work, he's, uh, he's not doing good. I'm, I'm scared for his life. I, I, I think he wants to take his life. He's not in a good place. Am I telling this right, Sam? He's like, can you pray with him? I'm like, sure, Sam, I'll pray with him. So before I left, Sam brings his friend in, and I start talking to him about the Lord. I start talking to him about life. But it was a brick wall. Someone say brick wall. He wasn't, his spirit wasn't receiving because he was so dead inside. I don't know if he was on drugs. I don't know what was going on or whatever was happening. But I just, he was not receiving what I was saying. All of a sudden, I just started prophesying. My face started arriving. I said, I'm going to prophesy this guy's soul back to existence, whether he likes it or not. And so all of a sudden, the anointing starts coming, and I can feel his spirit and souls receiving what I'm saying. How many people know you just got to keep beating it? Beating, beating the devil in the head. Because sooner or later, he's going to break. So in the spirit, you might not see it, but he's moving. He's moving. So don't be moved by the physical. Be moved by the spiritual. Because God's moving in the unseen. Faith. So here you go. So as I'm saying that, he's like tearing up. He's, he's, he's like beginning, like God's starting to move on. And then he looks at me, he's like, hey. He's like, do you, do you mind if I uh, take a quick break? I'm like, sure. He's like, I'm going to go outside and smoke a cigarette. Is that okay? I'm like, bro, <laughs> do what you got to do. Then all of a sudden I had a, a vision from the Lord. And in this vision, I saw the man open up the door, get his pack of cigarettes out, and he looked up, and there was a deer in the pond in front of the church drinking water. And out of my spirit, it was like the Holy Ghost speaking right through me, I said, wait, before you go outside, to let you know that God is real, and he cares for you, and he longs for you, and he wants your soul, there's going to be a deer drinking water at the pond. And the scripture says, as the deer searches for the, the water, so, so your soul longs for him. And he looked at me like I was crazy. And he goes out, and I'm sitting there in the office with my hands over my head like, oh, dear Jesus. And Sam went out with him, didn't you? All of a sudden, they come running back in, and this guy's eyes are like saucers. He's like, bro. There was a deer <laughs> drinking the water. I'm like, shut your mouth. <laughs> you know, and so we were able to pray with him. His life got changed. And then three years later, I forgot about this story. This guy calls me. Sam gives him my number. He goes, what's your address? I'm like, I give him my address. He's like, I'm sending you a gift. He sent me like $200 cash. And this long, I have it in my drawer, in my office drawer, in this long letter of what that meeting it did for his life. He's totally changed. He's saved and he's living for Jesus. Be obedient in your gift. Trust your gift and have faith that God's going to use you. Is anyone getting anything? Joshua 1, 2, verse 3. My servant, mo my servant is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over this Jordan. What was the Jordan to Israel? The Jordan to Israel was the boundary between the wilderness and the promised land. It, it was 40 years of wandering. It was 40 years of complaining. It was 40 years of disobedience. It was 40 years of complacency. It was 40 years where nothing got finished. The actual 
Jordan this time of year for the Israelites was treacherous. Overflowing its banks with snow melt from Mount Hermon. Most of the year, the Jordan River was about 100 feet wide and only 3 to 10 feet deep. However, when the Israelites crossed it, it was at flood stage, overflowing its banks. So here you have this treacherous river right now. If you look, the Red Sea, God had to use Moses to lift up his arms. And the Israelites crossed the sea. They saw the Egyptians behind them. Well, if you look at now this next generation of Israelites going into the promised land, it was a totally different group of people. They walked by faith. What Joshua said they did, and they were obedient. And the presence of the Lord in the ark went before them. And they were obedient to all of God's commands. And when that presence went before them in the ark, what happened to the waters? They parted. And in, in Isaiah, I love this verse. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not get burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. And I love that song we sing. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you. He is with you this morning. In the morning, in the evening, and you're coming and you're going. When you reap, weep and rejoice, he is for you. He is for you. My friend, if God is for you, who can be against you? What is the Jordan in your life that stands between the old season and the new season? What is the Jordan? Because God has given each and every one of you dreams and visions of what's to come. But there's a Jordan in your life that's standing between you and the promised land. My friend, at the Jordan, when you cross it, on the other side of the promised land is a massive harvest for you to take. Come on. It's in the Bible. There's a massive harvest. Because once you defeat the Jordan and let God fight your battles with you, come on, there's a harvest on the other side. Do you know that before they crossed the Jordan, God had manna, bread from heaven, come down and feed them? But after they crossed the Jordan, come on somebody, the land was so ripe and so fruitful, the Bible says that the manna ceased. Some of us have been living on old manna. There's a harvest out there ready for you to pluck and ready for you to subdue and ready for you to take. And the Lord says it's time to stop living off the old manna because what's on the other side? The Lord says I've called you to be a king. I've called you to raise up other warriors underneath you because this is a new generation. It's time to arise. The promised land is not for tomorrow. It's for today. It's going to look different. It's going to look different. There's new blueprints God has established for the church. It's a new blueprint. It's not going to look the same. It's not going to look the same. God's overtaking our natural minds. And he's putting the supernatural on our natural. There's business men and women here this morning. Maybe you have a business. Maybe God spoke to you to start something. I'm telling you, you're about to do something that's never been done before. I release the anointing on you even now. To step out in faith and know that the Jordan that stands before you is nothing. Because God is with you and he's not against you. His presence goes before you. His ark of glory is inside of you. It's around you. The Lord says, be strong and courageous. Arise because it's time to fight now. The world needs you. The world needs your anointing. The world needs your testimony. The world needs the church. If it's not you, it's someone else. Don't let God pass you by. You only live one time. Make a dent. Make a difference. It's time. Stop sitting in front of your TVs, sitting there, wailing in, in, in your life, watching reality shows and soap operas. It's time. I don't feed myself with things in this world. I feed myself with, 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 with the word. I feed myself with worship. I feed myself in prayer. Before I go to bed, I'm listening to messages. I'm getting downloads from heaven. Why? Because i got to stay filled so I can release the glory wherever I go. As the church, we're called to be the tip of the spear. Strong and courageous. 
Is your weapon dull? Because this morning God wants to sharpen you, to prepare you, and to be ready for the harvest in 2025. This is your moment. This is your time. He's calling you to leave. Come on, someone clap and shout. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I thank you, Lord, for the harvest. I thank you, Lord, that we're strong and courageous. Even when we, we're fearful at times, I thank you, Lord, that your presence is enough and it overtakes the accuser of the brethren and the king of lies. See, devil's a liar. He'll whisper a thought like he whispered to Eve. She bit the apple. Got her husband to bite the apple. And then Adam blamed his wife. She made me do it. I mean, just look at the confusion that just started from one lie. Some of us are so confused because we, we believed one lie. Oh, that person said this. You know, it's like when you're in middle school or high school. One, one girl, you know, teenager will say something, tell the other person. Then all of a sudden, like, you know, Johnny went to prison and is in jail and is never coming back. You know what I'm saying? It's like it just, that's how the, end, that's how the lies start. And so you begin to believe these lies about yourself and that you can't do specific things. And then you become, you're not useful anymore because the enemy has you entrapped. It's a snare, it's a, to trip you up. And so it starts with a lie. And if you bite it and you come into agreement with it, you become handcuffed. You become handcuffed. But I believe this morning that the anointing to break chains off your life that's here this morning. Even as Paul and Silas began to preach in the book of Acts chapter 16. And they were arrested for preaching and releasing the glory of God. They threw them into the innermost chamber. And the Bible says they were severely beaten. How many people feel severely beaten? My friend, I don't know what you've gone through. I don't know what's happened. And my heart breaks for you this morning. It truly does. Because my wife and I, we've gone through a lot this year. We've had many, many battles. And I'm, I'm with you. And I understand that life is not easy. But let me tell you something. And sometimes things don't make sense. But the one constant is Jesus Christ. And your faith. Life throws you curveballs. But let me tell you something. Paul and Silas were beaten and severely flogged. Blood everywhere. And they've been traveling by boats and sleeping on floors. Come on, we got nice beds here. Life is good. <laughs> Am I preaching to someone? In the midst of our scenarios, we have to take a step back and be like, whoa, we are blessed. Paul and Silas were beaten and flogged, thrown into a dirty chamber, strapped to the chains. And it says, in the midnight hour, they could have been complaining. <laughs> Come on. They could have been mad at God. I'm preaching your word and look where I'm at. No. <laughs> they literally started singing and shouting to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Then all of a sudden, the breaker anointing hit the jail. And it said everyone started hearing what they were saying. And because the breaker came in, everyone's chains got loose because the anointing broke out. And so, my friends, be strong and courageous this morning. Arise. Get yourself ready for combat because this is a season to take territory and land because God is downloading new blueprints for you, your family, your businesses. This is it. If it's not now, I don't know when it's going to be. This is your now moment. If you want it, you got to go after it. You got to go after it. 
when it doesn't make sense, sing praises unto God. When it doesn't make sense, rejoice your way to a victory. Be obedient. Trust him. Have faith knowing that God's going to get you in, get you out of it, and you're going to be victorious. The Bible says you go from glory to glory to glory to glory. But what we don't read there is you go from glory, but then there's test, trial, battles, wars, victory, glory. Same thing. Test, trials, battles, victories, glory. Don't get stuck between two glories. Keep pushing because you want to go to the next level, to the next level, to the next level. God didn't call you to stay the same. God called you to build. God called you to be fruitful and multiply. God called you to take down the giants. God called you to be alive on the earth now for a reason. It's time to stand up, do something, fight, and take down the giants in the promised land. Hallelujah. Come on, someone clap and shout. Someone clap and shout. Hallelujah. 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 I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. There's people here this morning that have been battling, that have been wrestling. Some of you may have even said, I don't even know why I'm here this morning, but something brought me in. My friend, that's the Holy Spirit. And I believe that His presence has been chasing you here to these chairs. And you're here and you've been feeling this burning in you. My friend, that's the call of God on your life. And God's calling you to step out of the, the religious box this morning and come to Him. If you've been feeling heavy, if you've been feeling burdened, if you feel like you've been falling away from the Lord, maybe you know Christ, maybe you've accepted Him, but you've just not been living the life. Maybe you don't know him. Maybe you never accepted Jesus. And you're like that, that man, Alan, I met at Winn-Dixie. And you're like, I need to get saved. I need to give my life to Christ. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. What is God's gift? He sent his son, Jesus. He was the bridge. Sin can't mix with perfection. There had to be a sacrifice. Every other fake God is dead. But on the third day, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He's alive and he's seated in the heavens. This morning, if you want to turn, if you want to reset, accept Christ and move forward, I'm telling you, he's going to meet you where you're sitting. And you're never going to be the same because this is the greatest choice you can make. With every head bowed and every eye closed. If you say this morning, John, I need to change. I, I need to accept Christ. Or I just need to reset my life and get back on track. If that's you this morning, I just need you to slip your hand up and put it back down. I'm going to say a quick prayer. Amen, brother. Anyone else, just slip your hand real quick and put it back down. I won't embarrass you. Amen. Thank you. I see those hands. Anyone else? I won't embarrass you. Just lift your hand real quick and say, that's me. I see your hand. Thank you. I see your hand. I see your hand. I just need to change. I need to go to a new glory. It's my time to arise. Hallelujah. One more opportunity, if that's you, just lift your hand real quick. I'm going to say a prayer. I see that hand. Thank you. This is your now moment. This is your time. One more opportunity, just lift your hand real quick and put it back down. I see that hand. I see your hand. Hallelujah. One more opportunity. I feel like the Lord, I see your hand. I, like the, I see your hand. I see your hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to wait a little bit.
little bit longer. I feel like there may be a couple more. One more opportunity. If you just feel this is my time, just lift your hand real quick and put it back down. Hallelujah. I see your hand, brother. Hallelujah. If you raised your hand, this is a holy moment. If you raised your hand, we're going to say a prayer and we're going to reset your soul through the power of the blood of Jesus. Just repeat this prayer with me, everyone. Say, Father, in Jesus' name. I thank you for everything. I know that I've done wrong things. I know I've sinned. I am far from perfect. I'm not coming here for a religious ceremony. I'm coming here for a relationship. I'm coming to you, Jesus. And I'm asking for forgiveness. Forgive me of my sins. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose again. Come into my heart. Live inside of me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. And empower me to live a supernatural life. And I'll serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Why don't you just clap for those that raise their hands. For those that raise their hands, you may, maybe you come to this church, maybe, maybe you don't. I just want to just say one thing before we let this moment slip by. If you're looking for a home church, I'm telling you, this place, we have a Bible school. We're discipling. If you want to learn more about Christ, get plugged in, join a community group, and I'm telling you, your spiritual walk will begin to flourish and grow because you need people who love Jesus. Amen. And this church does. So I just honor you this morning. Hallelujah. How many people came in this morning with some needs? Amen. How many people know the Waymaker's in the house? He's in the house. He's in the house. Amen. Hey, if you enjoyed today's message and you want more coming your way, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or our podcast. We'll notify you of great messages and great content we'd love to send you. Hey, I'd love to meet you in person at what, 9 a.m. service or 11 a.m. service. Have the best week of your life. We'll see you soon.